What exactly are visual states? Well, in WPF, visual states are multiple appearances that your control can display depending on depending on anything you want, depending on a property, depending on if a user clicks your control, you can change visual states depending on anything. So we're going to demonstrate how to add that to our analog clock control. And what we're going to be doing is whenever the time is nighttime, we're going to make our clock really dark, have like a black background, and then during daytime it's going to have a light blue, sky blue background. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set these visual states in our control and then our XAML is going to check the visual state of this control and change its style accordingly, change its appearance. So the first thing we want to do is whenever the time changes we want to see do we want to switch visual states. So we're going to define a function here and we're going to call this update time state and it's just going to take our time. Let's define the function for that. And real quick, another thing I noticed is that we're passing date time around, but really like maybe we only need a time span. That's what I thought, but then I was like maybe I want to do some special things if it's like Christmas or something. <laughs> I don't know. So, first thing we're going to do is it's very simple in this code behind of the control to switch visual states and stuff. So we're going to check the time, we're going to check the hour, and if it's greater than 6 a.m. or the time is less than 6 p.m., so that's 18, because we're doing military, then what we're going to do is we're going to use our visual state manager. Every control has this built in, and we're going to say go to state, and we, this is a little method and it takes an element, a framework element, that's just this control. The state name, this is whatever you want to name your state for the control and the XAML is going to use that state name so make sure you name it something simple. We're just going to call it daytime or just day. And then use transitions, we're going to say false. You'd only use true if you wanted to use custom transitions but we're not going to be getting into that in this video. And then otherwise we're just going to copy this and if it's not daytime, well it's nighttime. So what's going to happen every time the time changes it's going to call update time state it's going to look at the time, if it's daytime it'll set the visual state of the control to day if it's night it'll set it to night. So now let's head into our style and let's start reading those visual states. So to do that we're going to create a visual state manager inside of our group and we're going to target visual state groups and define a visual state group. And we're just going to name this group. You can really name it anything you want. This is really only important if you have multiple groups of visual states. But in our case, we only really have this time of day state. So we're just going to call this group time states. And in here, we can define our visual state. And this visual state takes a name and it's important that you name it the same as your name defined in here. So in our case, day, and then we'll have another visual state and it'll be named night. So in here we can define our visual states. So visual states, they rely on storyboards. So basically all that happens, whenever your visual state gets set, say it gets set to day, it'll just run the storyboard and conduct all the animations inside your storyboard. So inside our storyboard, what kind of animations are we going to be doing? Well, we're going to be doing a color animation, not using keyframes, just a regular color animation. And this animation is going to target our part clock. So that's like the, that's basically the circle that surrounds the clock. And what we want to do with that clock is we want to target a property. We're going to target the fill property. So it's going to fill the inside of the clock. And we can specify a color. And to do that, we just say 2. And the color that we're going to go to, if it's day, we'll say, I think there's actually a color called sky blue. So let's do that. 
Okay, so that is our first animation. We're going to add a few more, but let's just get this thing up and running. So we're going to actually copy the storyboard and move it into night. And we're going to target our clock again, target the fill, and this time we're just going to set it to black for nighttime. And let's go ahead and actually run this. So let's put a breakpoint here just to make sure we're hitting it. Let's start this puppy up. Alright, so we hit the break the break point and we should be switching to daytime. And we get an error actually, and that's because we're trying to animate the fill property. Okay? And the reason this is a problem is because the fill property on this ellipse, it's not actually I can't really show you from XAML, but basically it doesn't it doesn't take a color, it takes a brush. And that's a problem. So what we have to do instead is we have to manually specify the fill. And in here, we're just going to say it's a solid color brush. And the color by default will just be white. So by default, we're filling with white. And then we're actually going to give this a name. And we're just going to call this clock fill. And the reason it's not a part is because it's not really something that's going to be read in our analog clock logic. It's just going to be style specific. So we're going to name it clock fill, not part clock fill. And instead of targeting the part clock, we're going to target this clock fill. Because clock fill, we can target the color property. And the color property can take a color. So we can update that here as well. And it's kind of a pain, but that's just the way it goes sometimes with WPF. You gotta learn the little quirky things. So let's go ahead and run this now. And we hit this breakpoint again. We are gonna be going to daytime. And there we go, our thing, our clock has transitioned to daytime. So now what I wanna do is I wanna actually update these lines as well, change the color of those. So we're going to have to do the same thing because what we're going to be doing is updating the stroke property. And the stroke property, again, it takes a brush, not a color. So we're going to have to manually specify it as we did down here. So let's go ahead and just copy this just to make it simpler. Plop that in there, change this to line.stroke instead of line.fill. So it kind of bloats our XAML a little bit, but it's okay. So let's get rid of that. Name this. I'm going to change the name of this control to Hour Stroke. And then we can copy this now. And we're not actually going to... I'm just going to do it for our minute hand and hour hand. I'm not going to do it for the second hand, but... You can if you want to, I just I would just rather leave it red for simplicity. So we'll change this to minute stroke. And then we'll go ahead and add these animations up here. So we're gonna do a, two more color animations. And we're gonna have an hour stroke and minute stroke. And we're gonna update the color on both of those. We're gonna make it gold. And then for nighttime, we can copy all these animations. And we're going to make it just a simple white. So let's go ahead and run that. And. Oh, we have to. We have a problem here. So the ellipse is defined last, so it's actually covering all of these. So you could mess around with Z index and stuff, but what I'm going to do instead is just move it to the top. Because I think that's simplest. So I'm glad I went over this because maybe you would have been confused. But now if we run it, there we go. Okay. Alright, so we have these basic animations. I want to show you guys the night time real quick. So let's get rid of this timer. And let's just change the time to 
something night related. So we're just going to add hours, and right now it is 10 a.m., so I'm just going to add 12 hours to that. And let's give this a shot. And we still get daytime, even though it's 10 p.m. Uh, this should be and, not or. So for it to be daytime, it has to be greater than 6 a.m. and less than 6 p.m. So it has to be between that time before we had either or, and it was pretty much always true, I think. But anyways, that should fix that. Let's give this a shot now. And there we go, we got nighttime. And I guess another thing I should do is show you guys the transitions between them. So what we're gonna do to show that is I'm just gonna have a little flag right here, a boolean. And what I'm gonna do is if flag, then it'll be daytime. And then afterwards it'll change the value of flag to the opposite of flag. So basically it's just going to switch back and forth between these time states every time we call it one time changed. So let's show that. So there we go. It's just transitioning back and forth. Nighttime, daytime, nighttime, daytime. So the transitions are pretty dang smooth. So let's get rid of this flag. And another thing I want to show is you can do more than just color animations. So Say at daytime you want to like completely hide the clock. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but what you can do is you can use a double animation and you can target, let's just target this entire grid, so we'll just call it this clock. So you can target the clock, you can target the opacity property, and you can send that to, I believe, zero, and that will hide it. So now if we run this, there we go, our clock just disappears. So this is pretty powerful, you can, you can target any property you want, you can do all kinds of crazy things. Storyboards are pretty powerful with all the animation, so maybe I'll make a video on those as well. Ooh, and now it is time for the Christmas special. So Christmas is in five days, I am in the Christmas mood. I hope you are too, if you celebrate Christmas. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a Christmas visual state. How exciting is that? So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to check this time. And if the time.day equals 25, and the time.month equals 12, well, that just means it's Christmas. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to take our visual state manager, and we're going to go to a state called Christmas. And then, if it's not Christmas, then we'll just do our regular day-night stuff. So now we just have to define this Christmas style. And to do that, we're going to just copy this visual state. And call this Christmas. And for Christmas, the clock fill is going to be... Make it green. And all of our hour hands and minute hands they're going to be red so now let's go ahead and test this let's just pass in the date time of christmas how exciting is that and we can do any year we want let's just do 2000 what a throwback and the month will be 12 the day will be 25 and let's give this a shot and there we go, we have some Christmas colors. And, okay, our time isn't updating because we're not running the timer right now. So I guess I'll just have to wait till Christmas to see it in action. But anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for this tutorial. So we went over how to switch between visual states in your code behind for your control. We went over how to define the different, the different visual states and the animations depending on whatever state your control is in. We went over a little bit of this like quirky fill element. It doesn't, it really can't take the brush, so you have to pass in this custom brush and all that. So I hope you guys learned a lot from this tutorial. I hope you guys find some cool uses for visual states 
If you find a cool use, be sure to let me know in the comments. I'm kind of interested. They are pretty useful. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.